as you go from one release to another, invariably at some point you're going to have to deal with data conversion. I mean, one project uh, that we were on one time, we spent a year because earlier versions of the product, um, we had a partner out there that just did not want to upgrade. And they wouldn't upgrade and they wouldn't upgrade. They, they, had so, they had millions of records. And they were worried because an earlier version was based on SQL 2005. And the new release was going to be based on SQL 2008. And the two schemas of the products were completely different. We had evolved the product so much that we included security features and all sorts of, I mean, new reports and all kinds of stuff that was not in the old version. And so the partner, uh, which had this deployment just all over the country, they, they didn't want to upgrade until we could prove that their data would not be damaged in the upgrade process. So we spent a year making sure that that was the case. Because what you had to do is you had to just laboriously go field by field, okay, this maybe is um, fixed length characters, and this is now a variable length, or it's a different length, or it's one kind of number to another kind of number. Maybe this uh, had a decimal point at this, and now that has a decimal point at that. And, and, um, or maybe there was absolutely nothing originally to go to now. Or maybe the way the data was organized this way is totally not organized this way. So, I mean, we spent a lot of time mapping exactly what would happen to all these data fields and testing it. We actually took some of their production data in a test environment, just a, a copy to prove, and then we had to laboriously go through and make sure that all the results were exactly what they should be and that they came out in reports the same way too. So data conversion is very often not at all trivial. I mean, it can be a big deal. You, you can go from a system that's generally simpler or organized differently to a system that'll be much more complex, probably organized more efficiently or more organized with just a lot more going on, a lot more interdependencies and connections, whatever. So you're going to have to spend time on data conversion. And if you don't spend that time, yeah, you'll, you'll upgrade and the data will all convert and then it's not at all what it should be. And that may not even show up until you do much more complex type reports. So as an IS auditor, we have to consider was sufficient time spent, and don't be surprised if you spend a year, year and a half uh, between major releases, figuring out how to make sure that the data converts properly, especially in something as complex as like what we were doing was healthcare. So don't be surprised that people have to spend that time and make sure that they did spend that time, make sure that they had controls in place and make sure that they absolutely verified that there was nothing wrong with the data uh, once it was once the version was upgraded. So with, in data conversion, you're going to change computer data from one format to another so that an old program can have its data work in a new program, or it can work in a new operating system or a new platform. Um, and examples could be as simple as character sets or um, types of numbers, or it could be as complex as it's arranged totally differently and there's no matching thing uh, from the older version to the newer version. It could also be media types. Well, we used to store these all as WMVs. Now we're going to store them as MOVs. And how do we convert the data without um, losing image quality? And, um, you know, because always whenever you transcode something, you're going to lose something. And, and so you have to really take a look at all of that. Or possibly it's an MS Office type format. We're going from doc to docx. Or we're going from... Um, a proprietary thing like Microsoft to an open source thing uh, that's the application that's going to use proprietary data. Or um, maybe we're going to run virtual machines and we have had old VHDs, we now need to convert them to VHDXs or VMDKs or, or uh, whatever the format is. So data conversion could be all kinds of things, but as an IS auditor, we need to know for sure that when they planned their data conversion, that they had all the controls in place and they did all the testing to know for a fact that the data came out clean. In, in our case, um, in the, the EHR, we had a lot of data that had duplicates and therefore it was dirty. It, it was dirty data. And we had to find ways of getting rid of the duplicates because it was going to corrupt our, our new system and our new reporting. So be conscious of all of that. Data conversion techniques, there are a variety of ways to do it. Um, 
you can have two systems in parallel. So like I've got the old system, I've got the new system, we run them together in parallel and we slowly phase out the old system while we phase in the new. That's one way. Another way is we could phase it in um, like modules. So we'll, we'll phase in one whole functionality or one whole module and uh, slowly phase that in. Or you just flip the switch and you're just ready to cut over. In, if you, no matter what method you use, you've got to make sure that you can fall back in case the whole thing's a failure and that you haven't like ruined your data while you do this. So make sure the data is very well back, backed up and very well documented. As you migrate applications or as you migrate data, um, you'll want to for sure have a migration plan. Here's just sort of a diagram here of we have several systems that we're migrating releases. Whatever it is, your migration plan should show a breakdown of activities, when we're doing it, what's going to be impacted, how we fall back in case we have to, who's going to be involved, who's potentially going to be impacted. Because you're, you're trying to bring the whole system online without disrupting anybody, without really causing any interruption. And so sometimes folks will deploy something on the weekend when no one's in, or we do it at night, or we do it in small phases, or we do it in um, small parts of small geographical areas or departments so that we can learn lessons and uh, do it even better and more effectively as we continue to, to phase out the old and, and phase in the new. So when you're evaluating the effectiveness of a system migration as an IS auditor, you should bear in mind the following things. Make sure that the right questions were addressed early on, which means people had to ask the questions, which means you need to involve all kinds of stakeholders so that the questions are raised. Make sure that the requirements and the expectations were set. People know what to expect. They're not expecting some miracle or expecting it to do this or do that. Make sure that there is proper support in place and so that um, the people who are uh, rolling it out and the users have support and training and they have people right there to help them. Make sure that you have support structures and support functions. Train the end users. You want them to be self-sufficient. Give them um, ways of resolving their own problems or, or um, requesting help desk support or escalating problems. Make sure you've got all that sort of in place and you figure it out exactly, which means you need to know all the scenarios. And again, you need to get the input from all the people who are going to be involved, who know what will happen. And then you, of course, perform the data conversion and you monitor how well, how effective it was. And then hopefully the data has been converted with only a little bit of cleanup, which almost certainly there will be cleanup. And then the, um, the client can move on with this new application that will help them do their business function a whole lot better. And with that, that is lesson three. We have talked about software and system development lifecycle from the planning and the requirements gathering and, and design and, and development testing and um, change management and, and releases. Next thing we're going to talk about in the next lesson is maintaining this software or system development lifecycle.